Good morning. We look today at 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And Paul starts talking here. He says it's, it's about the mysteries of God. He, he, uh, he starts this. It says, Let no man consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. And he uses the word servant and steward. A servant, a steward was a servant who was put in charge of certain things. It would be like Joseph in the Old Testament, you know, the Joseph of the coat of many colors who became, you know, sold off to Egypt and, and, and ended up in a position of power. He was, a, he was a servant, but he was a steward. He was placed in a certain position of, of uh, maybe not power, but responsibility. And so Paul is saying that, you know, we are, we are, let's consider ourselves servants of Christ so that we, you know, we haven't any standing that way as far as Christ is, but we are stewards, uh, we, we are put in charge of teaching, you know, so, you know, it's a, it's a mixed deal in there, you know, that, you know, we're, we're people living on this earth, you know, so we are at one time a sinner living on this earth and we are a saint, you know, we're two different entities that way so but anyway you know we're stewards of the mysteries of god we are to show show god's love and to show god's grace you know then and, and just to live our lives that way it, you know he says it's required of stewards to be more faithful to be found faithful and, and it is you know when we have responsibilities i mean um we, we got to own up to them we can't you know if if we're responsible for making sure the lights are turned off before we go to bed at night. I mean, you got to do that. I mean, somebody, I mean, this is just part of a responsibility. It's kind of a poor example maybe, but, you know, we, we have things in our lives that we we need to take care of and that we need to do and that, um, you know, if we don't do them, then it falls on someone else. And But we have responsibilities in life, and, and this is what Paul is talking about, you know, that stewards must be found faithful you know it isn't that you just um live the life of a christian on sunday morning when you go to worship but you you are faithful in all things all time all you know, the whole the whole week long you know and then he talks about judging you know it's a small thing that if i should be judged by you well we aren't to judge each other paul says we're not to judge ourselves we are to leave that judging up to jesus and and that is so true, you know, as far as our eternal salvation and everything goes that, you know, we can't, I mean, I can't say that you're a worse sinner than I am or I am a worse sinner than you are because, you know, that's, that's going to be up to God and up to Jesus to judge who we have been. And when the Lord comes, you know, all things are going to be brought to light and we're all going to be in the same boat. We're all going to need a gracious and merciful God. Uh, Paul talks about in the next few verses that, you know, we've been kind of made, been made fools for Jesus. You know, we, we, the, the foolishness of this world, you know, makes no sense according to um, what God is and God's God's foolishness of sending Jesus and all of that. And he, you know, and he he reminds us, you know, that you know we're we're not all the same we're we all are different but but we are all the same in christ we've all received that same blessing um and i'm not f forgiven because of who i am i gotta say i gotta think about i can't boast that i'm a believer in jesus christ i can't boast about that because it, it's it, you know it, it's a gift i mean it isn't something that that I, I can say, well, I am much better in the kingdom of God because I am not da 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 No, I mean, we, you know, we're all the same in the eyes of Christ. You know, it's, it's this gift of salvation, this gift of forgiveness is a gift from God, and I am no more deserving of it than you are. So, I mean, I, I can't boast about, about who I am or what I've done because it doesn't make any difference. In, in the eyes of God, and, and I kind of, I mean, Paul writes later on, you know, this well done, good and faithful servant, you know, and 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 sometimes we we kind of pat ourselves on the back, or maybe our moms or our dads or somebody, you know, we pat them pat them on the back with that well done, good and faithful servant, but you know, 
Paul is saying here, you know, we shouldn't boast about who we are, what we've done, how we've got our faith, or any of those things. You know, we are all in the same boat. Um, you know, and so he says, why do you boast as if you've already received it? You know, we, you know, it's it's a gift, and it isn't something that we've we've earned or anything that way. So we can't boast um, that. You know, I can't say, boy, I can sin five times a day because I'm forgiven. I can do, you know, or, or that, you know, I love God more than you do, or any of those things. No, we don't, we don't boast in our faith. We, we simply are to sit back and enjoy the fact that God loves us enough to send, send His Son. He said, in verse eight, you're already full. You're already rich. You, you mean, we have the riches of God. I mean, we may not be rich in a worldly sense. But by knowing Christ, by knowing our our, our Lord has has died on the cross for us, that our sins are forgiven, we are we are rich. And He talks about reigning with God. And there's there's some things in here that just kind of are double talk. When we're weak, you are strong. When we are distinguished, we are. Or when you you are distinguished, but we are dishonored. And um, he's he's kind of yeah. I think in a way saying that, you know, when I give of myself, I'm giving for you. I mean, then again, I mean, that's almost kind of boasting. I'm not not exactly sure what's going on in some of this stuff, but, but he says in verse 14, I do not write these things to shame you, but to warn you. You know, he says, you've had 10,000 instructors, but you don't have many fathers. And he calls himself their father. But the reality is, is that Paul is, saying somewhat to them that to to be more like I have taught you to be, to remember what I have taught you, to remember what Timothy and the other leaders of, of faith have taught you, and to emulate them. And you know, thinking about that and and Paul saying here that, you know, the you know, he says, I'm like a father to you, um I think about how kids you know, girls and boys alike emulate their parents. You know, they'll they'll walk like them, they'll talk like them, they'll they have mannerisms like them. And and uh, Paul is saying, you know, be this way in, in your faith in Jesus Christ. You know, just learn from my example, and and follow Jesus, love Jesus, trust in Jesus, trust in God as I have, and and don't and don't hold back. You know, give it all you've got and. And just to know and to trust, and it's it's so easy, but it's so hard. I've said that you know before too. But you know, Paul is Paul is writing a letter to these people, reminding them of God, reminding them of their faith in God, reminding them of what they've been taught. Paul is very possibly you know in prison or detained right now. He can't go, but he he says, "I'm sending to you Timothy." You know, my beloved son, Timothy. And Timothy is not his son, but he is um, one that Paul has become very fond of. He is one that has become a follower of Paul. He is a messenger. And yet, you know, uh, Timothy doesn't do everything that Paul appreci appreciates and approves of either. But yet, Paul is sending Timothy to them uh, because of his love for Timothy and his love for the people of Corinth. This does you know, as a, as one to encourage and as as a leader, you know, maybe you could almost say as as a pastoral presence, you know, as someone to to remind them of who they are. You know, he says, I'm sending you, Timothy, my beloved and faithful son in the Lord, who will remind you of my ways as I teach everywhere in the church. And and it is. It, it's a reminder for us as well that Paul shows us in so many ways how how to live for Christ and how to be strong in Christ. I mean, I don't know how much you know really about Paul. He he's he's imprisoned for his faith. He's beaten for his faith. He's you know he has many trials and tribulations in his journey of faith. You know, not only starting with the road to Damascus as his encounter with Jesus, but life isn't easy for Paul. But yet, through all of those things that happen, 
he remains 100% faithful in Jesus Christ as his Lord. And, and that's his reason for writing to the, to the people of Corinth and to writing for all of us, is that we too would be 100% confident in Jesus Christ our Lord.